Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Frugalissima, where I name Sam, where I talk about all things sewing, specifically dressmaking. Today is day 40 of 100 days of sewing and today I am going to be talking about sewing on the bias. Uh, but first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who has liked and subscribed these videos. If this is the sort of thing that you like, please consider subscribing. It helps people uh, find my videos on YouTube, so by liking and subscribing and clicking that notification bell, that will tell you when I bring out new videos. In general, during the week, I produce either one or two. I've started a new series called uh, Frugal Friday, which is part of the 100 Day series. Uh, where I look at free patterns and on a Sunday I do pattern reviews, hauls and um, you know makes and things like that, usual sewing sort of blogging stuff. Uh, but today I just want to specifically look at uh, sewing on the bias. I've just recently made the Desi skirt from Seamwork which is this and it's cut and sewn on the bias. If you're looking for a free pattern that uses sewing on the bias then there's the Pauline Alice pattern which is the Ballion top and slip dress which is really really pretty. I've made it out of a, a silk, in fact I upcycled it out of a silk maternity dress and uh, that turned out really well. Just to demonstrate what the bias is to start off with, that's your bias. There's your selvage and it's anything that's cut with a 45 degree angle. You might be sewing on the bias but you might not have considered that that's what you're doing. So for example if you're sewing a top that's got a wrap section that V deep V there will be on the bias. That will need similar caution. Anything with a full skirt uh, that where they or a wrap skirt or anything like that where it's cut like that all that is on the bias. The beauty of garments that are cut on the bias is that they uh, hug to your figure so uh, a lot of couture stuff is cut on the bias and, and it, it looks really beautiful because of how it hangs and drapes and swishes about. It's not difficult but it just needs some handling with care. Sometimes you might be sewing something cut on the bias and you're not particularly thinking about it. These tips will be useful for that as well. So I'm just going to do a quick video, top 10 tips of sewing on the bias and your very first one is choice of fabric. So if this is the first time that you've ever sewn on the bias then I would suggest not using anything with a directional print first of all. Chances are that you'll end up with something upside down. So try and avoid anything with a directional print unless you're specifically looking to play with pattern. So for example, this is out of one of the Great British Sewing Bee books and uh, this is uh, cut on the bias. It's just a simple top cut on the bias and that's playing with stripes. Something simple like that. And if you've got that great British Sewing Bee book, that's a great way to start cutting on the bias. To start simple, take it easy on yourself and not have anything that's got a directional print. By all means, use a print like a ditzy print or with the one that I used, this is a jacquard and although it's, it's no print in it, it's got a, a pattern within it, um, So, but it doesn't matter which way up things land. So that's my first top tip. The second one would be, still on the fabric choice, is choose something that's relatively stable for your first one. So don't go for a really flimsy, shifty silk. Uh, try something that's a little bit more uh, stable, that's not going to move about. and It'll just make life a little bit easier. My next tips are on cutting out. And number three is uh, cut on a single layer, if at all possible. If your pattern piece is actually to cut on the fold, trace it out first so that you're cutting the full amount out so you're, you're not doing half you're doing the full pattern piece that way you can get your pattern placement right and you've got less chance of shifting don't under any circumstances cut on the fold don't be tempted to do that cut on a single layer so you can actually keep the half a pattern piece and move it about so that you cut on a single layer but don't, don't be tempted to cut on the fold because it will shift and you will be annoyed you're just making work for yourself later on and still with cutting if you've got a rotary cutter then that would make life a lot easier for you uh, so that tip number four is use a rotary cutter if you can obviously with a rotary cutter you will need a mat underneath. If you've not got a rotary cutter then if you can pin your fabric to some sort of tracing paper and then pin your pattern on top of the fabric and cut all three layers together that will just help stabilise it. It's just to stop things moving about because cutting on the bias will 
move things about. So that's three and four. One final bonus tip is just to consider sewing with a, a wider seam allowance. It'll allow for any distortion when you're cutting. So if you cut with a, a one inch seam allowance, but stay stitch just inside that seam allowance. And then when you come to sew it, if you've got any distortion, you've actually accommodated for that within the cutting. So now, now getting onto the actual sewing part of it, and that's number five just handle everything with care. So when you're actually sewing it at the sewing machine, don't pull at your fabric, you know, just, just gently let it glide through and don't let your fabric hang over your table. If you can keep it as flat as possible. Also when you're cutting it as well, don't hang it off the end of the table because that will pull it. And also when you're sewing, don't just don't just handle it with care. Just treat it like a a, a very, very delicate kitten or baby or something. Just don't let your fabric pull or stretch either in the cutting stage or in sewing stage. The number six is stabilise your fabric as much as you can. If you're inserting a zip, make sure that that, that zip is, is stabilised uh, and stay stitch everything <laughs> that you can. The Desi skirt actually has it in the instructions and I would imagine that most patterns that are advising you to sew on the bias will tell you to stay stitch. So they got me to t stay stitch the top of the uh, front and back pieces and the waist pieces as well but they didn't tell me to stay stitch across here and I think that would have benefited from some stay stitching there. So just stay everything that's on the bias stay stitch. So that's that one. Stabilise and stay stitch. Number seven is ironing versus pressing. When you come to actually pressing your seams, make sure you're pressing and not ironing because that can also stretch out your fabric. Pressing is just going up and down with the iron and holding it for as long as, as you can and as much steam as you can. That will steam it out for you. If you've got uh, a clapper, bob a clapper on there as well and that will just um, that will just keep everything nice and stable. But don't be tempted to do anything that pushes and pulls against your fabric. So number eight is to use a zigzag stitch. A long, narrow zigzag stitch on any of those bias seams will just keep it nice and stable. On my, my machine I use a, a width of, of two and a length of five. It looks almost straight but it, it is just a, a zigzag stitch. And it just, it, it, it just stops it from the seam from waving about. So number nine is, once you've sewn everything, is to hang, leave the, leave the hem to drop for at least 24 hours before you sew the hem. Some people advise sort of up to a week. I think that would depend on the size of the um, garment that you're making. Each garment's going to be different, but the more hem you've got, probably the longer that you're going to need to leave it to drop. So with this Desi skirt, I just left it for just over 24 hours and it did drop significantly. I think I had about an inch difference at the back than I did at the front. And whilst we're on that subject, how to do that, because lots of people give you this advice to do the hanging for your hem it, but how do you go about that? So I'm lucky that I have got a mannequin that I can put it on and I can uh, do the measuring with the mannequin rather than trying to do it on myself. It is a lot easier if you've got one. It's very rare I actually use my mannequin but for that particular purpose I do use one and to elevate it. So rather than crawling about on the floor I put her on the table. I measured from the table up to the waistline to make sure that my waistline was level and then to the hemline to see if that was level. And on, on the mannequin, I've got a little gadget that is for hemming. I carefully put a pin on every point and then drew, drew on it. I pressed it, put it back on the, the mannequin and tried it on myself as well. When I was finally satisfied, that's when I finally hemmed it. Part of this hemming advice as well is I actually hand stitched the hem and made a smaller hem as I possibly could. I mean, I prefer a hand stitched hem anyway, but, and you don't have to do that. You can put it under the machine, but it's just, it's just my personal preference, but just, that, just carefully handle it. So number 10 is aftercare. So you're advised with uh, anything that's caught on the bias not to leave it on the hanger because it has the potential to carry on dropping. The, the weight of the fabric will continue to make that fabric drop. So fold it if you can. It'd be a pain having to iron it every time. Store it folded, that is far better for it because it won't continue to, to, to drop. 
and whilst we're on aftercare I would advise also hand washing not everybody's favourite I know but you've gone through all that trouble of handling something gently why bung it in the washing machine and then have the risk of it all pulling out again so I would definitely um, consider hand washing if you've got a setting on your washing machine of, of a gentle wash put it on that I definitely definitely wouldn't tumble dry but I haven't got a tumble dryer anyway so <laughs> dry it flat rather than leaving it to hang as well I wouldn't put it on the washing line so that's my top 10 tips of sewing on the bias. If you've got any further ones, please leave them below. And if, if you've got any patterns that you, you like that are cut on the bias, let me know below and uh, we'll share those as well. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. I shall speak to you later. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this sort of video. Bye.